Hi folks, today we're back with some more mid-2000s Sun Microsystems Enterprise gear, namely this Sunfire X2200 M2. So we'll do a little comparison throughout the video to this other Sunfire a V120 that I've got going over what I find to be the most significant differences between the two. But this Sunfire X2200 M2, I'm probably just gonna call it an X2200 from now on, was announced in August of 2006. I think this particular actual physical unit I have here is from 2007 based on the CPUs, what I believe are the CPU speeds inside and some date codes I've seen. But we'll go into that when we crack the lid open and have a little walk around. So I have already plugged this thing in, turned it on, hooked up the VGA port to this monitor over here, and that's it. It didn't come with a hard drive. I just know that it posts and it doesn't explode if I, <laughs> if I give it power. I haven't done anything more advanced beyond that. So today we're gonna call it a win if we can see this. This is the lights off management that should be running on this machine, even without a hard drive, hosting a web interface that we can manage the server through. So we'll go into that LOM stuff in more detail as I pull this thing apart, get it running and see if we can interact with it. So let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna point out is the, the huge design change that took place in the span of four short years. So you see the V120 is like much shorter and the X2200 over here, still in the Sunfire line, and again, only four years apart, is definitely more of a, what I would call a modern look or modern form factor. You can see it's much longer, like an enterprise server you would expect today. And the only thing really giving its age away is um, this really nice sticker on it. So this is like a, a super nice, like matte finished sticker with all the instructions about what's hot swappable and what's what has to be turned off for and all this stuff. And that's kind of really the only thing giving it away. Like a modern manufacturer wouldn't waste money on that. So the early 2000s, uh, which this one came out in, and I'll call this solid mid 2000s coming out in 2006, was kind of the wild west in terms of like enterprise server form factor. Some of them were much smaller. They were what we called appliances. I still use that term today, but definitely they were individual appliances. It just, just two years later, we had a huge transition here. And, and you can see my friend here. Let's see, which one does she like more? Yeah, see, she's a V120 girl. I think, I think I'm gonna have to agree. Better design from Sun on this one. So like I was saying, if I took this front bezel off, which kind of screams <laughs> 2000s, you wouldn't think twice if I told you this was a modern Dell or HP or whatever server. But a huge miss here, in my opinion, is this bone stock, black DVD-ROM thin drive here. When I first got this unit, I thought this was a replacement and I was kind of bummed out. But Sun's own marketing material at the time shows that same just basic black unit. And this just screams of cost cutting measures. Like I really find it hard to believe that they would put all this effort into, you know, look at their logo is right there on the hard drive caddy and all this other just kind of like very bespoke design they've been doing and you're going to tell me they couldn't find a gray dvd rom tray like <laughs> i yeah uh, i don't buy it all right but i think it's time to crack into this thing so as we're doing this we'll talk a little bit about all the specs everything it's got going on and then a little bit of the history of it and so i think somewhere on this big sticker it says if you're going to perform cold service you need a cold beverage but yeah anyway you you obviously do these thumb screws, lid comes off, and here we are. This is what I meant by this thing is modern. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it'd be really cool if, I have no way of knowing if it came with all this RAM, but this thing is maxed out. Like, I didn't expect this when I bought it. You could use this today. <laughs> In my opinion, I, my standards are low, but yeah, let's let's dive in. All right, so you saw on the front earlier, we have two hot swappable bays. And so it came pre-configured with a SATA 250 gigabyte, 7200 RPM spinning rust disk. These enterprise servers nearly almost always can take SATA or SAS. So if you're buying this used hardware, don't be stressed out if it says SAS. It almost always can take SATA. And even better, you can just buy a bunch of SAS disks. And then you can just leave them piled up on your shelf here because when you bought them all, you thought you needed SAS, but SATA works fine. And then moving on over here, you can see we've got tons of memory in here. 
let's pop one out. Yeah, we've got four gigs DDR2, ECC, no doubt. And we've got 16 total. So that means this machine, as configured, has 64 gigs of RAM, which, remember, it's possible that was in there in 2007, which was an outrageous amount at the time. So I was actually able to find some internal Sun sales documentation on this X2200 from the time, and they had it at a list price of $15,000 with 32 gigs of memory, so half what this thing has here. And that would be $23,000 here in 2023. So yeah, this unit with its current configuration was not cheap back then. And then we've got the two AMD Opterons. So by sheer coincidence, I'm fairly certain these are AMD Opteron 2200s. <laughs> not, not to be confused with this Sunfire X2200. So the, 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 the Sunfire 2200 had other Opteron variants. And the reason I think this is I've got some stickers here saying these are two 2.8 gigahertz CPUs. We'll, we'll find that out when we boot it up. And I really, really want to point out, and I don't know if I can get it on camera, so you can see the Sun logo here. Yeah, the there we go. And then it says Sun Microsystems on this uh, shroud. So all the cooling is coming in through this fan, traveling through this shroud to the second CPU. And this, this is the sun I love. Like, they didn't have to do this. Very similar to this not being necessary whatsoever. This was going to get racked up, scraped up, obviously, with a bunch of other units. Probably 10 humans have been inside this thing, you know, including the people that built it and assembled it. And just look at that. And this is super high-quality plastic, like... That etching is actually on the inside. I can feel it in there with my finger. So, yeah, I, I just love that attention to detail. This was some poor sun designers, like, you know, last grass for air or whatever. No pun intended with the fan. Yeah, I think that that is such a good sign of people that really care about what they're building. And then on the back here, of course, we have the power supply. Still only one plug. No redundancy. I don't think you got that until you upgraded to the Sun 4000 series of machines. I think, the, I don't know how often power supplies fail. I've never had it happen in a computer, but I think that's kind of standard these days. Like it is unacceptable to not have <laughs> dual power supplies in any sort of serious enterprise situation. And then over here, we've got some RJ45 jacks. I think this net management one is how we're going to interact with the LOM, or maybe it's this one, I don't know. I'm a little concerned about how I have to push that in, and there's a little, maybe a little damage to this <laughs> jack. We'll, we'll see if that's a problem. We've got some status indicators. This one's really cool. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the normal NYX, I think it's 10101G, so she's a ripper. We're at 1G on this, baby. And then, of course, some uh, USB 2.0 ports. A normal serial port, I believe we can interact with the LOM over that, which is kind of cool. That's a difference from the V120. Two PCI slots, no big deal there, probably won't use them. And then a VGA port, and I didn't realize this, but this guy over here has no graphics card at all. You have to interact with it over the net or over serial. And so yeah, we're kind of in the modern era here. I can plug a monitor in out of the box and see what's going on. All right, one more quick aside about why I picked this thing up and thought it was an interesting machine. Then we'll go over the LOM stuff and we'll finally fire it up. So this is not a Spark-based workstation, obviously. It has some AD AMD Opterons inside, which are x86. And Sun actually advertised that you could install Linux or even Windows Server, as well as Solaris, which is what they were shipping with all their uh, Unix and Spark-based servers. So that's pretty interesting. This is Sun admitting that maybe they have a problem <laughs> and they needed to diversify and let folks install Linux on their machines or even Windows Server. And so that's pretty interesting historically. This is another sort of budget entry in the line. So this was meant to compete on price point with other competitors. Uh, and yeah, I thought it was super interesting that this was sort of a turning point for Sun. It was probably, it's probably them really saying that they were in trouble. <laughs> 
<laughs> they couldn't just rely on their own chipset anymore. The market had kind of spoken. So yeah, that's why I thought this was interesting. It's got either what's called the ELOM or embedded lights off management or the ILOM integrated lights off management. It should have shipped with the ELOM. It might have ILOM after an upgrade feeling enterprisey yet. So I'm going to do a little bit of research and see what's going to set us up for success here to, to actually interact with it. Uh, and then I'll bring you guys right back. All right, we're all hooked up. Research tells me that I can just use the normal serial port on the back of the X2200, and we should be able to interact with an LOM uh, as we might expect here. So it might require a um, null modem adapter. So I'll throw that on there if, does, if it doesn't work. Let's power her up. Nothing should happen. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> all right. It's also plugged into the monitor. Um, it's really loud, so there will be some post-processing, hopefully not too painful for you guys. Uh, let's see what we can get going here. All right, we're back, and it's alive. You can see it's just going through its boot loop. It's complaining about CMOS. That makes sense. Uh, and then uh, over here, we're going to try the terminal. Nothing. All right, I'm gonna throw this no modem, no modem connector on and be right back. All right, the no modem cable adapter is on. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this thing doesn't smell very good. <laughs> it's, bur it's burning off something. Um, okay, so we're over here. Theoretically, we just press enter. Ah, yes, okay. So this is the plain old serial cable going to the serial port on the back of that guy, no special ports or anything. There's no hard drive in it. And here we are presented with an LOM login. Let's see if the passwords are the defaults. So root, and it's called change me. Oh my gosh, we're in. Oh, this is so awesome. Okay, so it assigned itself an IP address. Let's, I don't think that's gonna work on my network. Let's see if we can power this thing down back here or on the front, I should say. Okay, that's better. A little quieter in here now. Um, let's see, is this still live? Yeah, so just like you'd expect with lights out management, you can interact with it when the machine is powered down, but obviously there's power going to it. The LOM stays active. Uh, you can see this, we have what I was calling the embedded lights out manager. What we're going to want to do is get this thing hooked up to my network and we're going to assign it an address that the, well, maybe we'll do DHCP and we'll see what happens. It has a static one right now. So let me go look at those commands and we'll be back. All right, quick aside. So there's this light button on the front of this thing. You press it and it starts blinking. And back there you can see it's also blinking a light on the back. And so you'd actually use this you can imagine this is in a, a huge server farm. They're all wrecked up. You don't have access. You're in the middle of the room. You don't have access to the back and you need to do some maintenance on this thing. So you'd actually come to it, press your button. And then when you're around back, you can actually see which one you want to deal with. All right. So I perused the 164 page X2200 LOM manager administration guide. And let's see what we can get going here. So. Let's say show agent info. So I think the problem is the gateway needs to be my router 192.168.1.1. We're going to try to figure out how to set that. And then it does say it's using DHCP. So it should just grab one from my router, but this isn't a valid subnet of mine. So this, this isn't going to work on my network. So I wonder if I need to power cycle it. So it's connected to my network in the, the network um, jack. I need to get it to take on another IP. I'm going to power cycle it real quick. Oh, this is kind of cool. So I power cycled it and we can see it booting all the stuff coming out. That's really neat. All right. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So what we're going to do is just give it a static IP address, I think. So we'll say set agent. All right, I have a hard time believing it's going to be this easy, but it is pointing at the right stuff now. Uh, let's let's see if we can ping it. Uh, it helps when you plug it into a port that's actually connected to your router. All right, I'm at my other machine now. 
So it's actually plugged into the network. Let's see what we get. I assigned it a static IP of 40. Haha, <laughs> yes, okay. Now let's see if it's hosting a web interface. All right, I have my doubts about it working in a modern browser because of SSL problems. Yeah, so it sees it though. So this is actually good news. This is this browser complaining that you know, no way I'm talking to this server. So let's go back to our old friend Windows XP. All right, here we are in a Windows XP VM running IE7. So let's go check that out. Oh, did you see that? It said server management or whatever. Continue. <laughs> look, look at this. Look at this UI. It's from 2006 at the latest. Okay, so it was root and the default was change me. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes. Look, look at all this crap. <laughs> Oh no, it thinks we can't run Java. I know this thing can run Java. Uh, let's, let's install some stuff. Okay, there we go. Let's try that again. It remembered. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Oh my gosh, even Windows XP is trying to stop us. Okay, we'll, we'll get over that. <laughs> look, look at this. It is so slow. Let's look at the what it thinks about memory. Yeah, you can look at every single dim slot. This is awesome. Let's look at the CPUs. It, it, it is an Opteron, we knew that. 2800 megahertz, doesn't know much. Doesn't know which one specifically it is. Uh, let's look at our event log, view event log. So, ooh, <laughs> DIM5 has a bit error. That's, that's not good. Uh, it thinks we're in 1943, so we definitely have a CMOS battery issue. <laughs> uh, this is so cool though. This Look at this UI. Oh man, I can add new users, do all sorts of stuff. Let me see if I can get Java working. When's the last time you did this? Uh, we're gonna turn off every security setting I can find. All right, so basically I'm gonna go through and just enable everything in the security settings. <laughs> and it turns everything red. If, if IE7 thinks you're doing something wrong, you probably are. But yeah, I'll, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn all these on and I'll be back. Let's try again. Oh, come on. It's doing something over here. Flash mode. Obviously, that's what we want. Oh, yes, look at, guys, look at this. This is a Flash app. There's, there it is. Oh, yes. What is, the, what is this? The fans? Well, I think I've subjected you to, to enough of this. All right, so now we've got two fully functional Sun Microsystems Sunfire Enterprise servers. This V120 from 2002 and this X2200 M2 from 2006. But they're not running any OS right now. I want to get Solaris running on these, the period correct one for each one, I think. Nine or ten for this one. I think it's eight or nine for this one. So the V120 did come with a hard drive that I have not checked out yet. No idea what's on there or if it works. So hopefully this just has a version of Solaris running already and we'll be good to go there. For this one, we're going to need to set up a VM in Proxmox. I'm going to install Solaris 10 on that, use it as a host and try to netboot this thing uh, over the network and install Solaris that way. I've got plenty of hard drives, SATA or SAS, they can go in here, so that's no issue. After that, we're going to be cruising because I've got these. These are Sunray 2s. These are thin clients. So you would hook this up at a workstation. It's got enough to do video, connect to the network, but you'd have something running on one of these hosts that would actually store your session. And you can actually take a key card and move it between, between the two thin clients. So I'm gonna order some key cards and we'll get that going. So yeah, I think that's gonna be pretty exciting. If you made it this far, there's obviously more Sun content coming. It's kind of my thing right now. So I appreciate you watching these videos and following along with me. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.